So I'm going to talk about, oh, let me just make a comment. I loved your talk. Excellent. And guess what jacket this is? It's a cabbie jacket. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? And you know what's funny about them? I am not loyal to them. And you know why? I don't like to go to parties like that. I, I work a lot, and you have to go to that darn party on like a Saturday afternoon, and I think, are you kidding me? But guess what? My sister loves to go. So you know what she, and we, we are very similar. We look a lot alike, we're the same size. So she takes pictures at the party, and then I say, okay, I'll take that, and I'll take that. Isn't that great? <laughs> so you know, you never know. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna talk about, are you chasing the wrong patients? And I'm gonna ruffle some feathers here. Just gonna throw this out here because I just wanna give you some other perspectives, okay? That, that's what I do. All right, so here's the good news. Everybody is the marketplace now. Isn't that right? Everybody. When this became, when, when this first started, who was this industry for? Celebrities and socialites, right? Look what happened in a matter of less than two decades. It is now for everybody, every gender, age, ethnicity, everybody. The downside is everybody is everywhere. When we were growing up, some of us, and I'm watching the gender or the, um, the uh, ages in this group, when some of us were growing up, we had media talking to us, and just a few, right? Three, three whatever, three TV stations, two magazines, whatever. They were talking at us. Look what has changed in a matter of two decades. Everybody's talking to everybody. They no longer own any audience. Nobody owns any audience. We own little pieces of audiences. So <laughs> how complicated has this gotten? Are you as a practice gonna try to be everywhere that they are? And if you are, good luck. You're gonna need some people to make that happen because this, this isn't going away and it's just getting bigger and it's just getting more complicated. It just is. So you've gotta deal with it somehow. All right, on top of all of that, the technology advancements are off the charts, aren't they? When this all started, you could get a facelift. I think, what else could you get? A, a breast off. Look at what you can get now. Dear God in heaven, can you imagine being an aesthetic patient in today's world? Not all, you think it's all about, oh, you know, choose me, I'm the best choice. Are you kidding? They didn't even get that far yet. They're just trying to figure out what should I get? And how many times now do they show up and they have diagnosed themselves, they know exactly what they want, and you know that's not gonna work for them. So all of this has gotten very convoluted, hasn't it? So, this is what ends up happening. This is the staff in the, in the room. This, you're confused, you're frazzled, you're, uh, the patients are confused and frazzled, the surgeon or the, the physician in your practice keeps adding more stuff on, because right now we're at this meeting, how many of you bought some new technology while you've been here, <laughs> you know? So you're gonna come home with a whole bunch of new technology and you're gonna say to your staff, hey, we offer this now, blah, 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 okay, we offer this now. And now the staff's gonna figure out, how do you sell this? How, what are the FAQs? Well, how do I explain this? And where does it fit into all the other things you bought the last meeting? This, that's what's happened, right? So, so far, <laughs> this is pretty gloomy, isn't it? And I don't mean it to be, I'm sorry, I don't mean it to be. But it's something to consider because if you're gonna have that mentality as the leader of the cosmetic practice, I want everybody. I just want everybody, bring them all in, bring them in. You have to deal with that infrastructure to handle that. And you better get some more staff because staff gets burnt out from all of this. If you haven't heard or if you haven't watched them walk out the door, it's complicated when the staff has to deal with all these pieces. There's nothing simple about cosmetic rejuvenation anymore. It used to be simple a long time ago, but now it's not. It's a true business, it's a true competitive marketplace. It's consumers with a credit card, not an insurance card, and so you have to deal with it. So I, I feel like I'm always the um, reason of reality, but nobody likes that. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna say. Cosmetic patients are not created equal. You cannot have this cookie cutter approach to a cosmetic patient because you are different. You approach you differently than you differently than you differently. You've got to figure all that out because what business are we really in? The business of psychology, the business of feelings. The men in the room are going to like that feelings. And you've got to figure out who is this patient? What is it they want? Not just logically, what do they want? Not just physically, what do they want? But emotionally, what do they want? Okay, it's a lot. 
So, I'm going to completely generalize right now, okay? Sue me. <laughs> I am not an ageist or a sexist or whatever is there are. I'm just going to make it simple here. But let's say you want everybody, okay? Then you have to figure out who everybody is. Now, a lot of practices love to go after the male. You know why? Because they're tired of doing the other thing. You know what I really think happens? I think a lot of you have been in practice for a long time and you're bored. You're more bored of your stuff than the patients are. Like the patients just heard about cold sculpting, but you've had cold sculpting for two years, so you're like, oh, let's move on, give me something else. Honestly, I think I would look at that. But let's just say you want to go after the male. Here's my take on that. When you focus over here on the male, just know from the statistics, 10 to 15% of a cosmetic industry is male. If you go there, you're gonna to have to take some of your resources away from the 85% that we know want aesthetic rejuvenation. So um, I know I've been banged for this before. Boy, at this meeting, this guy said, how dare you, my practice is full of men. And I said, terrific. He also has a staff of 30. He also has, look at Grant Stevens. My God, he has a, a man room. What, is it called? what do you call that uh, when a guy wants to get away from the family? Man cave. Man cave, yes. He has a man cave. I mean, the guy has spent, what, half a million? Did you see his man cave? Unbelievable. Black leather chairs. I think you can smoke cigars in there, which seems odd to me. But, but if you want to cater to that, you have to, you have to invest in it. And you have to invest the team and the staff and the structure. But you also have to understand the psychology of a male. Because here's the characteristics of men. They're private. I don't know any man who comes in for a treatment and runs out to soccer practice the next day and says, hey, what I'm doing, you know? I mean, men just aren't like that, are they? Or, or are they? No man I've ever met has been like that. So they're fairly private. I don't believe they're gonna, you're gonna grow your practice with men to go like, you have got to see what I've been doing. Um, also, they want things quick, quick and easy. And, you know, let's not forget, Men came from the fight or flight. It's built in their DNA to run for the hills when pain is involved. <laughs> men don't like pain. And when I wrote my book, I interviewed men. First thing they said was, oh, if this is going to be painful, count me out. Like, you have to knock them out to get their teeth cleaned, for heaven's sakes. So that's working against you a lot in this industry. So here's the message from men. I want to get in, get out, get it done fast. OK, that's a man. Please, I'm generalizing, OK? Now we're going to talk about the millennium, millennials. This is, a, this is a tough crowd, isn't it? So this is the younger person, not cutting anyone down here, just making observations in my growth, just throwing it out there. But now you've got the patient who is distracted, completely not listening. I watch my, my nephew, who's now 15, he's all over the place. I don't believe we've ever had a conversation longer than about 15 seconds because he's all over. I don't know how you grow a relationship when somebody is that distracted. How are you going to get the attention of them in the media when they're doing 14 other things at the same time? That's a challenge. So here are their characteristics. Super tech savvy. Unbelievable, huh? Isn't that amazing? You can see who's been on their computers for a lifetime and who's been on them just recently. Um, also, they're materialistic. However, they're broke. And, and generally speaking, isn't that interesting? How, how does that happen? Like, how does that psychology happen? And I know you're going to say, I, I don't know about you, but it's synonymous now, millennial and uh, entitlement. Does anyone, ever, does anyone ever hear that? So I'm not saying about you guys, just other people. And then there's a lot of weak brand loyalty. Because they are so distracted and jumping around, they have not connected with you like you think they are. Because while they're talking to you, they're still looking at all the other competitors, the other websites, talking to their friends. It's, it's difficult to build a relationship when somebody is that extended. Their attention is that extended. Now, physically, they want back what they don't have. Just gonna say, <laughs> usually they want boobs, butt, and lips, right? So you, that's what they want. But if you think about that, that's a one-hit wonder. Because once you do that, there's not a whole lot going on with this girl. She's 20 years old. I mean, wait a decade or bring her mother in or something. But it's not a long-tail patient, as I call them. So her message is, 
Text me your offer, and I'll see what all my friends, real or fake friends, say about it on my favorite social media sites. Are all of you on Instagram now showing the photos? Who's on Instagram right now trying to build your practice from Instagram? Okay, a few. It's, it's tough. It's tough because if you go there, especially for, let's say, a Brazilian butt, it's a, it, that seems to work very well on Instagram. And I happen to know some practices who do very well with that. However, they chat in detail. So if you give this one a deal, they just told, I don't know, two million other people about the deal. So that can, you've got to figure all that out. So we need all the technology involved. And it's not just that they need this technology or they want it. Now you have to deal with that technology. If you want that patient, you've got to figure out how to text them their appointment reminders because they're not reading email. How to Pinterest, how to use Pinterest, how to use Instagram, how to use uh, mobile marketing, how to, how to, how to, how to. I mean, that goes on and on. So all I say is if you want to go there, you've got to have staff that can go there with them. The issue, the biggest issue with this group is it's so much about sharing. Sharing a whole lot of nothing, but it's sharing, sharing, sharing. So they, you need to be sharing with them as a practice. That's almost a full-time job in, in today's world if you want to go there. And then is Kardashian still, are they still the buzz? Anything Kardashian. If you want to vote for this group, somehow do some work on a Kardashian and you're in good shape. <laughs> right? <laughs> you really want to, want to build a practice quickly? Grab one of them. <laughs> So, here's the other issue. It's got to be cheap and it's got to be fun. Everything's fun for these people. <laughs> I've, I've never seen anything like it. Uh, so, if any of you employed some of them, uh, but it's cheap and fun. Everything's free. It, it, it's free. But they want quality, but they don't want to pay for it. And I'm just generalizing, but uh, Groupon was a huge one for this group. Does everyone, <laughs> was, has Groupon completely taken over? Has, Wow, they changed the world for us, didn't they? That, that, that didn't help our industry at all. The issue with Groupon, even if you don't use that, your patients do. And it took a whole mindset of patients down a notch. In America, we never, ever negotiated anything. It wasn't like that. We just, it was $50 and we paid $50. I used to live in Istanbul, Turkey. Jesus, $50 was $20 or $2, or if you're terrible, it was $200. I mean, the art of negotiation was exhausting. But for them, for certain cultures, it's, an, it's a, um, a, a game or a, I don't know. I don't know what that is, but it's, it's here now, so we have to deal with that as well. Now I call her the middle-aged patient, how dare me. I have no idea how, what's middle-aged anymore, but I'm just saying, let's just say it's more like, she's more of her 30s, 40s, she's got a family now, she's married, she's got some kids, she might now be single, suddenly single, you know, you never know. So now we've got the middle-aged patient. <clears throat> now this group's characteristics are, they definitely have more money to spend. They've been in the workforce, they've probably been in, maybe out, or maybe they got married and they married it. But there's more money there, typically. They're fairly loyal, they want convenience and value because this group has a tendency to either be working outside the home and working inside the home, which are two jobs. There's usually some kids involved, they're younger, there's a lot going on, so convenience is everything to them. And they distrust mass advertising because their parents came from mass advertising and we always want what our parents, we don't want what our parents had, so they distrust that, okay? So, and you wanna remember that because you don't wanna use mass advertising for this group. Now in their psychology, they wanna get back what they had. So they want to like get their sexy back because they were just sexy about two kids ago and now they're not feeling it. <laughs> so their message is, I'll research and then talk to my closest friends to see what they know and then I'll research some more before deciding. So this group really is into research. Not media, not mass advertising, much more about let me understand what it is, who you are, what I'm looking for, talk to other people, find out what they're up to. So the strategies you want to use for this group is definitely social proof, information, and loyalty programs work very well. So blogging is a big one. And mommy makeovers, mommy anything, post mommy is a good, a good group. You know why? Because you know who they are, you can find them. It's very difficult to find <coughs> Um, but the mommies 
often hang around with other moms, is the point. They go to the same events together, they go to the same kid thing together, they go to the same schools together, they go to the fundraisers, they hang around together, so they're much easier to find. Online, they love to hang around on mommy bloggers. So if you're dying to know this group online, a really good idea is to go to something like technorani.com. It's called technorani.com and it's the top blogs. You don't have to, just Google it. You know how you Google everything, just Google it. The top mommy bloggers in the nation or in the world. And some of these bloggers have audiences of millions and millions of other people. Now granted, millions, you don't need millions. You need the ones in your backyard who are actually gonna get in the car and come see you. You know, so think about that. And I know a lot of you want them to come from out of town because it's an ego boost, but just have them come from the neighborhood because the mommies want to talk to the other mommies in the neighborhood, you know, and that's what you want. Okay, so I completely agree about events. They've got to be fun events for this group. It's got to be fun. And uh, when I first got into this a long time ago, I used to do marketing. I was like the traveling marketing person in San Francisco. and. We did, I always did fun events, and guess what the number one uh, theme was? Girls' night out. Leave the kids at home with your husband. Come on out, let's have some wine and shop and socialize. Those work the best. Because the psychology of this woman is get me out of the house, give me a good reason, get, let me go hang around with my friends, and I'll also shop at the same time. Now there's the mature patient which I believe I have entered that category. <laughs> Sorry to say. Okay, so here's the mature one. This is why I like this group, because they have endless needs. <laughs> right? Yeah. Would you like wrestling on this one? <laughs> yes, they've you do. Gotten, just start at the top and work your way down. Jeez. They've got wrinkles, red and brown spots, because they've been baking in the sun for six decades. Um, blotchy skin, crepey skin, sagging body parts, unwanted fat pockets. Golly, you just want to jump off the bridge, don't you? So, so, so that, that's a good, I call that the long tail patient because today you can just, you know, work with her eyes and she'll move right down to the next thing. This mouth area is now working. Oh, now let's take care of my neck. Now let's keep going. And that's a good patient to have because they also hang around with people just like them. So I like the group. They know each other. They talk to each other. So here are their characteristics. They're, more, they're the most affluent we've got. They've been around on the planet long enough to figure out how to make money, how to keep money, how to lose it, bring it back, marry it. There's a lot of things going on there. <laughs> they're most loyal, and that's what I like. We're, we're all looking for loyalty here. We just had a big talk on loyalty. It's tough to get in today's world, but I will tell you, it can be generational. There's more loyalty in an older, more mature patient than a millennial. Um, there's, they value personal relationships. They value them. That's a big deal. They don't just want them, they value it. Uh, they value quality. This preferred patient will pay extra for your skill and expertise. Whereas some, maybe, let's say the younger patient could care less about your skill and expertise. They just heard that you charge less than the other guy. And then they respect authority. Now, psychologically, this is all about renovation. This is about putting it all back where it was. Now, their message is, who do I trust to be the expert and or who do I know who can refer me to someone excellent? This group is much more about talking with their closest friends privately. They're also not screaming from the rooftops, though. They're not that crowd, but they are talking to their other affluent friends saying, who do you go to? Like, who, who, how, do you ever do anything? You know, that's the kind of group, the people at the country club. And it doesn't have to be completely affluent affluent, but certainly it's a higher caliber of patient. Can be. I love that they love your credentials, your skills, and your expertise. Because if this, you do know this industry is quickly becoming commoditized, and that's a problem. Because if they think anybody can do this, it's all a race to the bottom for price. Because what else do you have to go on? So I like the mature patient a lot because they do read your CV. You know that 10 page CV you have? They do read it. The other, the, the younger kids just want to see if you were on the doctors, you know, or you know, on one of the shows. But they really care about what, what education you had, 
any um, extra studies, they want that in detail. Also, any articles you're writing, any um, preceptorships you've done, you really want to pack it on and never take it for granted. Everything you have done to get where you are today took a lot, took a lot of education. Get it in that about us section of your website. Really talk about what you went through to get where you are. It's a big deal. And they love to research. If you like writing, and back to the bloggers, you can be a guest blogger. You can do Q&A on your own YouTube channel. Get that content out there because they love to know that you are, you know what you're talking about. Now this patient also likes heartfelt communications. Some of them do not know how to open their email, but most of them do at this point. But you definitely, there's a lot to be said. I'm a huge proponent of direct mail because I just know that when you send something to somebody in the mailbox, you're the only one in there. For, for a minute, you and that patient are by yourselves having this connection and there are no competitors around. There's no clicking going on, it's just you, that piece of mail, and them. I think it's golden. Um, so I would use it um, sparingly. I would use it for a group that would appreciate it the most. And then educational events. Now in this case, I don't go as much for fun events. They've had fun. You know, they're, they're, it's still fun, but then they're, they're right now when they're thinking about renovating themselves and rearranging space and body. It's much more about education and much more about face to face time with you. They want to look you in the eye and, and really feel like you're confident that they are the perfect patient for them, perfect for this procedure, and that they'll get a nice result. So, much more about face time and educational. So, given all of that, and Sarah will leave the room. <laughs> okay, so what's the solution? You're gonna miss the solution. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so far, I've been like Debbie Downer for God's sake. So here's the solution. It just got a lot easier. It's the data. You're gonna look at the data because the answer to this is in your numbers. For example, if you don't know your numbers, please go back and get to know your numbers intimately. Here's an easy exercise you can do on Monday. Just grab a piece of paper, have a staff person look at your schedule, write down the last 40 to 100 of your surgical procedures or your last big ticket procedures. Now, you wanna write down the trends. You're looking for what was their, what's their name? What's the referral source? How did they end up in your practice? What's the procedure they had done? The revenues of that procedure? the age they are, the zip code they are, and the gender they are. Huge. Has any, have any of you ever done this? Ever? One? I see one. Okay, we've got, oh, we've got five. Yes. Okay, now we're going to go back and everyone's going to do this. This will save you. I know you're all making millions over there with your events. This will make you, this will save you a half a million for sure. Because here's what I'm going to suggest. We're going to focus on the successes. <laughs> okay, no one's excited about that. Because here's what's going to happen. You're going to realize when you look at your trends, you are spending so much time, money, effort, resources, staff, trying to sell your skincare line, and you're completely missing the thousands that someone's trying to give you for profractional, cool sculpting. You only have so much to you. There's only so much time and money and resources you have. I can't stress it enough. Focus creates, uh, what, do, what do you focus on expands. If you keep focusing on this little thing, you're going to miss out on the big thing. So it's not sexy. That's the problem, though. I'm not, I'm, what I'm saying right now is not sexy, but it's practical and it's really good for everybody involved. So um, I've been in, a, I do a lot of on-site assessments. I had this practice that had to insisted on having four estheticians. They were part-time, coming and going. Nobody knew when they were there. It was, it was so distracting. It was disruptive and distracting. They all were on the payroll, and they brought in less than 0.002% of the revenues. Yet, yet, we kept talking about them. And I said, so far, I'm done talking about them because I only talk to the big numbers. So if you want to, if you want me to help you, they're gone. 
for the restructured, and let's go hang out over here. You just told me, eight, and you know that Pareto law, 80-20. 80% of your revenues are gonna come from 20% of something. When you do that exercise, you'll find out who that 20% is and do more of that. That's, that's, my, that's my thought. And then if you wanna know more, I, I have a free report called Five Quick Ways to Get More Cosmetic Patients. Thank you so much. I have come home from so many meetings and I thought about something Catherine said 